Hello, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. This is going to be part B of Zechariah chapter 5. Now, I did a, the one previous to this I put on Zechariah chapter 5 was a link to, um, I think it's Tiberiosaurus Rex or somebody's name. But if you look at the uh, previous study, it's got a link. And he does a three-part series on nuclear war in the Bible. And parts one and two are well worth watching. Part three, hmm, not so much. He thinks uh, the uh, Vatican and Rome are Mystery Babylon. I disagree. God never sent his prophets to Rome. Um, well, he sent Paul to Rome. But... Uh, the Bible clearly says that Mystery Babylon killed the prophets. Well, Jesus said that Jerusalem killed the prophets. If A equals B, well, then B is equal to A. I mean, that's, you know, simple math, right? Now, let's go read Zechariah chapter 5. It's real short, and um, I think you should take a look at... Um, his website. He does a really good job of showing what I believe is nuclear war in the Bible, in the end times. All right, Zechariah chapter 5, verse 1. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. Well, what does a missile look like? Looks like a roll, right? And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof 10 cubits. Uh, 20 cubits is approximately 10 meters for you people in Europe, or it's about uh, 30 feet. And the breadth thereof 10 cubits, so about half that. And I believe they're talking about circumference here, when they talk about the breadth, but I'm not sure. Then he said unto me, this is the curse. This is the curse. Nuclear weapons, a curse. This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of his house. So it leaves a, a residue and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. Hmm. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto him, Lift up now thine eyes, and see what is this that goeth forth. And I said, What is it? He said, This is an ephah that goeth forth, and said, Moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead. Now, what do they use to shield radiation? Lead. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. Um, you know, they think about it. They name ships after women, right? Uh, but he does a very good uh, explanation. So if you look at the previous posting I did on Zechariah 5, take, check, it out, take, check it out. Then lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork, and they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. So the thing's flying. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, Whither do these bear the ephah? And he said unto me, To build it an house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established and set there upon her own base. Now, What's up with the land of Shinar? Well, 
in Genesis 10.10, 10, And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Remember the Tower of Babel? Babel. God can, you know, it means confusion. God confused their languages. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Eric and Akkad and Kine in the land of Shinar. So Babel was in the land of Shinar. Well, what else is in the land of Shinar? Well, Babel evidently became Babylon. So let's take a look at Daniel chapter, Daniel chapter 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Um, all right, so in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. So the king of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar. Ah, so Babylon is into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. So Babel and Babylon are in the land of Shinar. So why is Zechariah 5 and verse 11 important where it says, And he said unto me, to Build it an house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established and set there upon her own base. Well, Mystery Babylon, people, right? I mean, that's the connection that I make. I mean, I might be wrong, but... Uh, that's, that's my take on it. So, and there's actually people that have come to uh, my YouTube site chap, uh, channel and said, oh, there's no nuclear weapons. It's all fake. Well, if you don't believe that uh, nuclear weapons existed, you should ask the, uh, if there's any survivors of Nagasaki and Hiroshima or Hiroshima, however they pronounce it, ask them their opinion and uh, see what they say. Of course, there's not many of them left. Um, I mean, you know, people, Japan knows that there was nuclear weapons, okay? They lost two cities in a matter of a second. The cities were gone. And uh, it burned up the stone and it burned up the... Uh, the timbers. Basically, a nuclear weapon is the heat of the sun in an instant. Now, here's an interesting verse. I believe it is set in the future after the thousand-year reign of Christ, but that's my opinion. I could be wrong. But... Uh, Zechariah chapter 14. Now, think about the scene from the movie The Terminator when Sarah Connor was at the playground and the nuke went off and it burned up everything and she's standing at the fence and her flesh just burns away and her bones are just standing, you know, uh, standing there. Think about that scene. I'm not big on movies, but... Uh, Ter Terminator 1 and 2 were two movies that I actually liked. Of course, I watched them long ago before I believe what I believe today. But let's think about that scene and listen to this, Zechariah 14, 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. That sounds like that scene from Terminator, doesn't it? So, all right, we'll take a look at that uh, video that uh, Tiberosaurus Rex did 
Um, he did parts one and two. Once you go to part one, it'll lead you to part two. Part three, I would skip. You know, people, if you read three chapters a day from the Bible, in one year you'll be done, you'll have read the entire Bible. And Alexander Scorby, S-C-O-U-R-B-Y, does an audio version of the King James Bible. You can get the New Testament on CD. I think it's MP3, or you can get it in a, a WAV file so that you can play it on a an old CD player. But uh, it's like 20, 25 bucks at, on Amazon for the New Testament alone. You could listen to it on your way to work. Be surprised how much you'd learn, you know. All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to uh, God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. This is Chaplain Bob signing off. Amen.